<clears throat> so good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Kipneno, the boarding and uh, membership officer here at Nature Kenya. And it's a great pleasure to welcome each and every one of you uh, to our today's virtual talk about uh, exploring the freshwater fish of Kenya that will be presented by Mufadal Alipai. I will request uh, all participants that we remain muted to give the speaker ample time to exhaust this uh, presentation. And uh, I'll also encourage that uh, we drop our questions, our concerns, and uh, everything that uh, maybe you might be having to ask in the chat box. We will strive our level best to go through all of them after the presentation. And uh, also to let you know that uh, the presentation is being recorded and uh, we will upload in our Nature Kenya YouTube channel after, uh, shortly after the presentation. So, uh, Mufadal Alipai is a fish conservationist and uh, researcher who is on a mission to document and raise awareness of fish in Kenya. Fish indeed are our heritage, and although hidden, they deserve to be recognized, just as all other terrestrial species in our country. There are well over 200 freshwater fish species in Kenya, of which over 15 species are endemic, meaning they are found nowhere else on Earth apart from here. Most species are currently under threat due to the dilapidated state of our rivers. They are bioindicators of nature, essentially telling us how healthy our ecosystems are, yet they have been ignored and are disappearing from our waterways due to pollution and drought across the country. Let's join Ali Pai this afternoon as we have a general discussion on fish species of Kenya, discuss the state of our rivers, appreciate modern pictures of fish, explore some interesting fish facts and discuss conservation strategies to save the last of our aquatic heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome on stage Mufadal Alipai to take us under the waves. Welcome, Thank Alipai. you very much. Thank well. you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, very glad to be here. I'm very glad to talk about a species that uh, ah, is the main part of my life, to be honest. I've been fishing since I was uh, very young, probably before I started walking. And uh, I've explored uh, lots of rivers in Kenya. I've explored uh, our beaches and into the deep oceans. And uh, through the years, I've seen our fish species disappearing. Large, large fish species are almost non-existent, very rare now. And the few that are left are um, in a very bad state. Uh, and from sport, as a sport fisherman, um, I saw the devastation right before my eyes through the years. And I turned into, uh, I turned my hobby into conservation. And I started studying intently about the different species. And I realized the lack of knowledge and general knowledge about fish species in Kenya. And I'm here to talk about uh, what I love and uh, what a species that is very neglected, yet is, as, a, as it was said, is a bioindicator of nature and therefore must be preserved and appreciated. So welcome. My presentation is called Exploring the Freshwater Fish of Kenya. Uh, and we are about to start. Ibuni. Okay. Uh, can can you see the screen? Yes, we can see. Okay. So, fish are the epitome of a healthy ecosystem. This is a picture that I took uh, in Laikipia. And uh, you can see the shallow water there. And you'd be surprised to know that I caught about five species of fish right there. 
And uh, this is often neglected as we concentrate on our terrestrial wildlife, but they very much depend on those fish species uh, that survive in those rivers. Protect your ecosystem. Who can name five freshwater fish in Kenya? If you can, that's excellent. But if you can't, we must rethink our conservation perspective. As we try so hard to protect what we can see, what we can't is disappearing and has been neglected from the inception of conservation. Fish are dying at a faster rate than all other wildlife right within our protected parks and reserves. They are bioindicators, essentially telling us how healthy our ecosystems are, yet we have ignored them and are unaware of their incredible diversity. We work so hard to protect our land species, setting aside land for conservation, fighting against poaching, developing tourism, supporting communities, attaining grants, and developing policies entirely for the purpose of wildlife conservation. All this has been commendable. But what of preserving the true essence of life, water? We need to start saving our most precious resource. This is Lake Dipe in uh, Tibeta. So water is the essence of life on this planet. It is our most precious resource, yet we are not only wasting it, but poisoning it. Our country is in the midst of an ecological disaster. Water pollution from sewage and industrial chemicals has decimated all aquatic life in our city. This flow of poison is sweeping into our national parks and reserves, threatening not only fish, but all wildlife in the country. We have to understand that every time you smell sewage anywhere, in this country, that sewage is entering our streams and is entering our rivers and is going into our national parks and it's going into our oceans or it's going into our major lakes like Lake Victoria. So we often neglect and say, fine, the sewage it's smelling, no one complains about it. And we don't care. But that same sewage, what people must understand, is flowing throughout our entire country. Water must flow. And if we don't stop the sewage, affecting life thousands of kilometers away. This is First Avenue Parklands. And the future is staring right at us. We have another ibis. Um, most of you I know are, uh, you love birds and are bird enthusiasts. And we never look at fish and how it affects birds. But I'll tell you that fish depend on clean, fresh water. Once they're gone, it basically means that our waters are poisoned. Our birds and all terrestrial wildlife depend on the same water to quench their thirst. Now you can imagine this adada. It's right at, uh, in Parklands and it comes almost every day and it drinks that sewer door. And recently it's disappeared. But it could be because it passed away, but I've seen dozens of birds lying on the same stretch of river passed away and just either in the water or on the edges because they're literally consuming poison. This river here used to be full of fish. There used to be barbas in this river. There used to be crayfish in this river. When we were young, we used to catch uh, catfish in the same river. I was in Aga Khan uh, school and Aga Khan is not far from this picture. And after school, I remember fishing in this river and now it's just sewage. And this sewage is basically entering our national park if, and we don't realize it. Our current state, 
in Kare, Nairobi, a place of once cool water that turned into the capital of disease and death. Almost every street reeks of our waste. We cover our noses, escape the stench by moving up to top floors of apartment buildings, and ignore the fact that we have choked to death aquatic species that once thrived in our capital. Nairobi National Park. Our pride is the only national park in the city, yet we have let Mbagati River turn dark with waste, killing off precious aquatic life, leaving our animals to sip on poison. Let's look at Aldonia Sabuk National Park, the home of 14 Falls, a place once full of fish, so full in fact, when we were young, fish would flow, it would fall with the flow of water. To catch fish, all you had to do was hold a net under the falls. It was once a wild place with cold, fresh water, a true spectacle of nature. Now desolate of any fish, birds don't fly as they used to, and the phosphorus form is a warning for all to stay away. It is very sad that our country has reached this state and we've not only affected fish, which I'm very passionate about, we've affected every living creature. And not only Kenya, but throughout our continent as our rivers flow into other areas. And once our sewage reaches the ocean, it goes all over the world. But there is a ray of hope. These are kids, some are mine. I used to, I take uh, kids fishing now and I teach people, uh, well, kids and, and their parents about fish uh, that you find in lakes and rivers and dams across uh, Kenya. And they're so interested and you should see the joy in their faces when they see these fish. So I take them, uh, we remove them from the water we take pictures, I teach them what type of fish they're holding and what type of fish uh, they have just caught, the different colors of the fish, what their fins are used for. Um, and very simple, interesting facts about the fish. And then we take the fish and we let it go. And they realize this is not only food, this is such. This is such an amazing creature with so many colors and such beautiful morphology, external morphology, and they're, they're just at awe and they just love the whole experience. And when they go back home, all they want to do is save the waters that remain clean because they now realize the most amazing species of fish that are present in our country. So not all is lost. Our country is blessed with natural springs, waterfalls, rivers, dams, and lakes. Somehow the resilience of nature has kept some species alive and surviving the tough times. We have over 200 species of freshwater fish. Although most fish in our cities have been wiped out, some have found refuge in dams, lakes, and river sections in our parks and reserves. They still have a chance at survival if we act now. Let's start putting fish on the map. It's time we look beyond our terrestrial wildlife and dwell into our aquatic ecosystems to document fish species surviving within Kenya. I want to showcase fish as never before, adding an emotional aspect to the species, just as there is, we have mammoth lions, leopards, and rhinos. Showcasing them in the beautiful natural colors, highlighting the unique features, survival methods, and the importance to our fragile ecosystem. Once people start appreciating and understanding wild fish, will spark an interest to conserve them and preserve the environments in which they live. So where do we start? How do we start 
such a new topic. Fish. I often tell people about fish and they tell me, oh, yes, we know tilapia, some know catfish, some know nile perch. Um, but they only know fish in terms of food. Fish with rice, fish with ugali, that's all fish are for. But it's time to change that because we have incredible fish species in this country. And as I said, with amazing colors, amazing adaptations, and they are so important to the entire aquatic ecosystem and our other terrestrial ecosystems as well. And we need to start making that connection and looking at fish just as we're looking at other animals that we love and appreciate on land. So let's start by revolution and conservation in the country. Identify freshwater fish species of Kenya. Surveys must be conducted to identify fish species surviving in each of our rivers, lakes, dams, and ponds, building a catalog of their existence in each of our We must go further to specifically identify fish in each of our wildlife protected areas, recognizing the incredible fish species which exist beneath the reflection of each animal that quenches their thirst. Highlighting the importance of fish in our ecosystem as bio indicators of nature and stressing the point that once these fish are wiped out due to polluted waters, our terrestrial wildlife will suffer the same fate as they depend on the very same waters for survival. This is an incredible species of fish. It's called white head catfish, Eretus laticeps. And if you look at the internet and you look at this fish, you'll only see very small versions of this fish. This is probably one of the biggest specimens. And this was caught in uh, Tana River uh, at uh, Cora. And it's such an incredible species. And it's so beautiful when it comes out of the water, it's like a silver torpedo. And the sad thing is, that all the way in Cora, where there's hardly any human footprint, the waters are turning dark. Because as I said, the pollution that we cause in our cities is going and affecting feed fish species like this, which are thousands of kilometers away, and they've never even been photographed. People don't know about this fish, and yet we're killing off the entire species. Cora holds one of the last wild patches of Tana River, home to an incredible variety of neglected fish. Savo National Park. This is Mzima Springs, and that's a Mzima Labeo. Home to Mzima Springs, the last crystal clear water in Kenya due to its underground source. We have an underwater viewing site where one is mesmerized by the sheer number of fish. Yet information on these species is not available for visitors to further learn and appreciate. As we go down into Savo and we look through, for those who have been to Savo, there's that under, underwater viewing site where you can view hippos and there's thousands of fish. But you don't know what you're looking at. We don't, we have such an underappreciation of fish that we don't have how could I say it? Even the respect of having the fish names there. So for visitors, when they're looking at this creature and appreciating them, there must be at least a signboard to say what this fish species are. And there's none of that. That just shows how underrated fish are and um, how underappreciated they are. Samburu National Reserve. It's a very unique fish called the Bagras Eurostigma. It was a near river courses through the heart of this reserve. And while its waters run shallow and modernization prevails, we are oblivious of the variety of fish. Hardly anyone knows that there's fish in Samburu and Shaba, yet we have endemic fish on that side and very unique fish 
such as the zero stigma, this is one of the first big modern pictures is fish. Siloy National Park. Welcome to Turkana. Sitting alongside the shores of Lake Turkana, the diversity of fish species in the lake is astounding. Yet the vast majority of visitors are not familiar with the assault, beauty, and complexity of ancient fish living in the cradle of mankind. We go to Turkana and we hear of fish, but there are no signs. There's no one there to teach you, or there's no way to learn how many species of fish there are in this incredible lake. All we do is net those fish and now export them within the country, transport them within the country and export them out of the country. Now I hear uh, we are exporting fish to Congo from Turkana and we made the government has made deals for easy transportation. And we're taking away fish which we cannot even identify. We're taking away fish, which people don't even know that some ancient fish, such as the African arowana, exist in those in that lake, and we cannot even breed in that lake. They still have to go to River Omo to breed, and they take years to breed. Yet it's so easy to net, to sign treaties and take away all the fish. And no one even knows what we're taking away. I think it's time to change our whole perspective of how we look at fish species in this country. Stop looking at them as only food. And even if we are looking at them as food, at least start appreciating what they are because we don't know what they are, but it's so easy to net, take, kill, and eat. But it's very difficult to protect. Mount Kenya National Park. The life of our country, protecting several rivers and lakes. Although known world over for its trout fishery, there are other species in our highland rivers, such as the stargazer catfish, which have been overlooked and must be recognized as a hardy fish surviving extreme temperatures and lots of habitat. So this is Mount Kenya National Park. Um, you know, trout was introduced. It's, uh, it's not an original um, Kenyan fish. And now as mentioned, there are other species of fish such as stargazers lower down in the mountain which are almost unknown. And uh, until recently, new species of stargazer catfish have been discovered in Kenya. Some are endemic to our region and we must look into our rivers intently to identify and appreciate our species of fish. So we are, we have to relay information to engage and fascinate the public. Raise awareness. We must showcase and be proud of the wonderful species existing within our borders. Just as we publicize to protect our elephants and giraffes, we must make people aware of the fish species in our country. After all, we do have elephant fish and giraffe catfish. In the process, we must educate on the importance of fish in our ecosystem while flaunting the beauty. So this is an elephant snout fish, Mormyris kanume. This was uh, uh, Western. This is in Chebloch River Gorge. I caught this one. And it's such an incredible species of fish. Um, and hardly been photographed in the country. And it's losing, it's losing its battle of life as the blotch is drying out and it's also losing its habitat as we continuously um, take, in, take sand from our rivers, 
for construction and these fish survive on those sandy banks and yet we are completely decimating the population without even realizing what we have in those rivers. This is a giraffe catfish from Turkana. Tackling pollution through the plight of fish. Once we have gained information and traction, we will use fish species as a basis to protect entire aquatic ecosystems all our wildlife are dependent on. It is vital to spread awareness of the state of our rivers to every individual to do their part and to arms of the government to protect our future. This is the reality of the situation on the ground. Dead fish all over. Now, this is just what we can see physically. Imagine the effects that if the fish can't survive, imagine the effects on all the aquatic life within our country. We can start by creating tourism. We must renovate aquariums in the museums of Kenya. It is vital to showcase live the species of fish surviving within our waterways for visitors to get a glimpse and appreciate the species of fish which they may never get to see in the wild. So I, do, I donate uh, lots of fish to the museums of Kenya, live for the aquarium section. We have um, the only species of, um, it's an African longfin eel that is live and in our fish tanks right now. So it's an incredible species of fish. It has hardly been seen in our country, but it is there to see in the museums. And I want um, for visitors and especially students to come around and see what we have within our aquatic ecosystems for them to appreciate. Saving communities. Protect fish to protect humanity. Tributaries across Kenya flow and join into Grand Rivers to reach their destination, whether it be a swamp, lake, or the ocean. The sewage we release into our cities eventually flows into wildlife protected areas and towards communities who depend on the very same water for survival. We have lost all aquatic life in our city streams and rivers, and we must stop the flow of poison. We must educate on what survives in our rivers in the hope that every county in Kenya plays their part to clean up and protect the biodiversity that is hanging on to life while saving communities dependent on these waters. In reality, the community is eaten every Kenyan. We all depend on water for our survival. When I, when I talk about fish, I'm, of, I'm often asked, if you want to get a grant or if you really want people to listen to you, you have to start talking about communities. And I said, what about communities? We talk about communities as individual communities. This concept of saving fish species affects every single individual and every single community within Kenya. Because as I mentioned, and I will keep mentioning, if you find sewage in Ongatorongai, for example, everything ahead, every community lying ahead is affected by that sewage water. And so if you start protecting your fish in one area and ensuring your water is clean, you are saving thousands of people ahead in that water ecosystem, and you're saving hundreds of communities that may not even know what you're doing. So when we protect fish, we're protecting essentially our entire country. Photography. Photographs continue to be the most powerful tool in conservation. 
there's certain appreciation and an emotional perspective of animals that one cannot ignore. Ichthyology literature in Kenya may have the morphology down, but fail to capture the hearts of Kenyans and our leaders. As I document fish across the country, I attempt to photograph them live, presenting them in the glory, detailing the kaleidoscope of colors and incredible physical art. It is this aspect that capture, we capture the attention of people and not just scientists to protect this wonderful species. So we've never looked at fish in a beautiful way. We'll always take a photograph of fish either in a jar preserved or as I said, on your plate to eat. By that time, it's obviously lost its colors. It's just dark and the flesh inside is white. But look at the colors on this tilapia and look at the silver on this squeaker in Tana. There is so much to appreciate and I want to build a different perspective of how people look at fish. On this tilapia, um, you, people, love birds and ornithology and, and they appreciate all the colors of the birds. Well, fish just have as many, if not more colors than birds. Just this tilapia alone, you can see the blue, you can see the red, you can see the silvers, you can see the iridescence. It's just, you can see the eyes which are red. And if you look intently and keenly, there's so many beautiful attributes to these fish. And once people start appreciating this, these unique attributes, then they will look at this as an animal or fish rather to protect and hold dear. Developing posters. Fish deserve to be promoted just as we have done with mammals, reptiles, and birds. I want to see I want to come to nature again and see posters of fish. When people move around, they see, okay, there's this fish in this country, it's so beautiful. I want there to be posters of fish in museums. I want there to be posters of fish in your house. So this fish is our, it's our heritage. We always look at lions and, and leopards and rhinos as our heritage, but this is our aquatic heritage which we have completely decimated. And I think we need to start developing posters and keeping them around and say, this is Kenya. These are Kenyan fish. These are endemic fish only found in Kenya. And even if they're not endemic, they are beautiful creatures that we are fortunate to have. And therefore we must flaunt them as much as we can. This is a barber from Kerio. And this uh, dwarf Lake Victoria Mouth Buddha on Eldoret. Taxidermy for display. Another way is to perform taxidermy on fish and display them on our walls, just as we have done and continue to do with terrestrial animals. This will allow for visitors to take an in depth look, in depth, timeless look, fish species which may be difficult to keep live in fish tanks. So it's not very easy to, to keep fish alive. Um, it takes, uh, I take care of uh, many aquariums and it takes a lot of patience, time, and is very costly. But we could have fish, this is a puffer fish, and that's obviously a tilapia, that we taxidermy and, and put them up for display which once you finish with the initial cost of actually taxidermying them, then you have something physical that people can appreciate and it doesn't take much. I would like to see much more taxidermy of fish species in our country. And to be honest, we have lost, I would estimate maybe 20 to 30% of our fish species in the country already. We have endemic species in so many rivers in our country, which we've lost. And um, without even a photo to remember them. And now with all that I'm talking about, 
photography, posters, taxidermy. I want people to, to look at fish in so many different ways and in so many different aspects and start appreciating them and say, no, we need to stop, no more losing our aquatic her heritage. And this is where we come into policy change. We must work towards changes in water policy to stop the release of sewage and dumping of chemical toxins in our rivers. Stop illegal dredging of river sand for construction. Stop the siltation and salination of our rivers through unsustainable agricultural practices. Just as the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife works hand in hand with the Ministry of Land and Physical Planning to set aside land for areas of conservation, we must join hands with the Ministry of Water and Sanitation, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, and all other ministries to ensure our rivers are protected. We cannot protect wildlife in our bubbles. We need to stretch far beyond our protected areas to ensure the future of wildlife in Kenya. So policy changes are essential to ensure our aquatic habitats are protected and more, more so, unlike, unlike a national park or reserve, where we're protecting animals within boundaries. Fish have no boundaries. So everything we do anywhere is affecting fish along that entire ecosystem. So what we do in Nairobi is affecting fish all the way in Kipi. What we do in, in the Mara is affecting fish all the way in Lake Victoria. What we do in Iwaso towards um, Narok is affecting fish all the way in Shampole. We really need to look at policy changes and work in unity to basically protect all our aquatic ecosystems within our country. Let's not have a conclusion, but a resolution. This is a marbled lungfish from Lake Victoria. A resolution to appreciate and save Kenyan freshwater fisheries. Humans and wildlife are intrinsically connected to the survival of fish species. And so we must ask ourselves, what is the future of conservation if we don't save our rivers? Let's not have a future of elephants wallowing in our sewage, lions dying from poison rivers once we stop the poison arrows, and birds falling out of the sky if they dare to quench their thirst. Our rivers are turning dark, Fish are dying, and with them, the future of all wildlife. Conservation con conversations and policies need to shift to protect fish, and leaders must comprehend saving fish is the key to the future of conservation. I want you to all use your contacts, use your influences, and start saving our water and start saving our fish because they are the future of life in Kenya. Thank you very much. I leave you with some images to ponder. Um, I make posters to explain what the plight of fish in a very simple, emotional and concise way. I don't know if you can see that. This is, sorry. So this is the elephant fish. And uh, these are literally the last of our river elephants. So this is an elephant snout fish, Mormyrus kanume. Leopards are not the only spots you need to protect. This is an east coast squeak. It's a cyanodontist found in the Tana River. It's a beautiful fish, and there's more spots 
in these rivers than they are on land. And therefore, I present to you spots that need protection. This is an African long fin eel, and uh, they are literally on their last breath in our rivers in Kenya. <clears throat> so these are, this is such an interesting species of fish. They're migratory, so they come from the ocean and um, they travel into our rivers and um, deep within our national parks and even deeper within our cities where they eat and they grow and they basically mature and gain enough strength to then go back to the ocean and breed. So this fish was caught in Nairobi, um, uh, close to in Kiambu, basically. And it has basically come from the ocean. So this fish has migrated all the way from the ocean into Kiambu. And now if you look at Kiambu, there, I'm sorry, for those who don't know, Kiambu is a, a developing uh, town in Kenya. And I've fished Kiambu almost all my life. And recently there's been buildings coming up in Kiambu and all the freshwater rivers have literally turned into thick sludges of sewage. And these incredible fish that have th traveled thousands of kilometers from the ocean all the way into our cities basically have nowhere to go and are, and are dying. So we are on our last breath. This is a wide head catfish, Claritus latticeps. Um, this is found, this one was uh, caught in uh, Mwingi, which is Tana River and in a place which is hardly, there's hardly any humans there, a very wild area, and we're killing these fish all the way in Mwingi. So you, you've killed me and you don't even know me. Save our rivers. This is a Nile puff fish found in Turkana. So we are poisoning the most poisonous fish in the world. This is such a unique fish. It's, it's the only freshwater puffer fish that we have in Kenya, and it's extremely poisonous. If you know cyanide, which can kill you in an instance, this is about a thousand times more poisonous than cyanide. And it has amazing adaptabilities. It has foot teeth, almost human-like teeth, and, um, and it survives in Lake Turkana and we're literally killing the most poisonous fish in the world. So this is an African arowana. The mystery of our ancient history saved the last of our living dinosaurs. This is one of the oldest living creatures in the world. And we're fortunate to have this creature in Turkana which basically adapted to um, it survives in Turkana as the Nile was once part of Turkana. And when the Nile receded and went on, Turkana was left to be. And these animals, these fish remained in Turkana. They're extremely ancient and uh, they breed very rarely. And recently I donated uh, two of these fish to the museums of Kenya. The last fish donated like this, I think was in 1970 something. And now I brought two fresh specimens proving that they're still alive and there's still a chance to save our ancient history. Thank you very much. And we went to take them now. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alibai, for that uh, insightful uh, presentation about fish. Indeed, you have uh, unearthed what is happening 
underwater and totally changed the angle in which we see fish. That was very, very insightful indeed. I Thank will, you. yeah, I will go through uh, the chat box and uh, see uh, some of the questions that already came in during uh, the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, from Shailesh Patel. Question for Mufadal. Do you record any non-native freshwater fishes found in Kenya? Oh, yes. Um, non-native, like I said, trout is non-native. Uh, we have a uh, black bass, which is non-native. I'm, I'm trying to use um, common names and not scientific names uh, as we speak, because generally when we talk about fish, it's all scientific and people then get put off. Uh, when we talk about, for example, elephants, we don't talk about, let's go save Laxanota Africa. No one understands it and be like confusion. But when we talk about fish, um, we tend to use the scientific names of fish, which is good because we can specifically identify, but I'm trying to relate to the people so to say like, black bass and trout makes it simple and makes it exciting and makes it uh, um, communicatable. Um, now, they are, there's lots of non-native fish and yes, I attempt to record every species that I come across and some are definitely uh, invasive. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, from uh, Dave Hilliard, this is all very sad news and it is the same throughout the world. Only a few people are aware of the serious decline in nature and the ultimate crisis that we face on the planet. Many people are just unaware and this is called baseline syndrome. In just a few generations, we as a human species have drastically affected the whole of life on earth. Now, a question is, what do you believe the future holds and what should happen? What needs to happen to make things better? So what needs to happen is we need to make, first, we need to clean our waters. See, when I talk about fish, I'm just using fish as a, it's a little difficult to explain, especially when I'm not talking to someone. I'm talking to the screen, but yeah, we, we, we need to look, fish is just a basis of what I'm trying to do, okay? And why do we save, why do we have national parks in, in Kenya or in the world? Because we know there is wildlife living in those national parks. We know there's lions, there's bears, there's tigers, what, whatever have you. Now, we are not saving our rivers because we don't know and we don't appreciate what lives in those rivers. And, and we have so much information out there in terms of scientific studies, in terms of research gates, and tons and tons of papers on morphology, on um, adaptability, on importance. But it's in a language that is not understandable and, and people do not get the message. So what, what I think we need to do is, just as you have done amazingly with birds, my daughter loves birds, one because of nature Kenya and the posters and the books and what have you. You make it very simple, you don't make it complicated. And what we need to do is we need to tell the fish story in a very uncomplicated, interesting way for people to see that there is life in these rivers. And we have to also explain that once these fish are gone, that our rivers will be poisoned for every living creature, including ourselves in the country. I mean, I, I don't know how our government and our institutions and our policy makers do not see this. I'm seeing sewage rivers right outside our schools. These sewage rivers, 
there used to be fresh water rivers which I used to fetch. And I follow these sewage rivers right to our national park. And I follow these sewage rivers right into our farms. And we, and we use the same sewage rivers to water our vegetables. And, and it's so shocking that these same vegetables are coming back to us and we're consuming them. So excuse my French, but we're literally eating our own sewage or our own shit. And in the process, we are literally killing every single aquatic creature in those rivers. Because when, unlike a national park, where you can protect within boundaries, fish have no boundaries. They're swimming and they're swimming and they're trying to get away from those rivers, the, the sewage, but they can't swim faster than the water flow. So we've literally condone them to death. And we need to, it's such an emotional and sad topic and why it's been neglected, I have no idea. Why people are not seeing it, I have no idea. But even if you don't care about fish, I'm sure you care about your future generations. And today, none of our children can put their hands in the rivers of Kenya without risk of a waterborne disease. which is so sad because we grew up swimming and fishing in these rivers. And now my children cannot even go close to those rivers because they reek of sewage. And I know if just they touch that water, it's poison. So if you don't care about fish, then at least care about your future generation. And, and using fish as your wildlife of the aquatic ecosystem, so to say, will actually push the message that there is things living in here. So protect them and uh, protect your future generations. Uh, thank you for the response. Uh, from Peter Murethi, we are planting trees in our water towers and take care of them to grow. But sad news, when the water flow downstream, it's no longer a river, but sewage flowing. Actually, something must be done for our health and uh, other creatures' health as well. Thank you for that. Uh, from Elizabeth Njenga, can we establish fish, fish sanctuaries as we clean up our water bodies? This is, you see, this is the issue that I have. What, we can't separate fish. We, I've, I've been involved, I mean, I studied at KWS as well. And we did elephant translocation from Simba Hills to Salvo and what have you. And, and we have translocated animals. Where are we going to translocate the fish? You take fish from Nairobi, you go dump them in Salvo. The same water is flowing through from Nairobi to Salvo. So in terms of fish, fish sanctuaries, no. And their lives are much comp more complicated than what we presume because we always, we always look at the uh, aquaculture and breeding of fish in the people. But other fish such as clarots and uh, the arowanas I've talked about have very intricate breeding cycles and the eels. So no, you can't move them to now start protecting them. What you have to do is, unlike terrestrial wildlife, you have to protect everything you have to protect our whole entire aquatic ecosystem for any of the fish to survive. So no, yeah, fish sanctuaries, no, you can't, the only thing I said is maybe you can build a, um, aquariums and um, we have some of the museums of Kenya and we can renovate them to make them more interesting, put in more fish and for just people to learn about what lives in our waters, but uh, moving fish and fish sanctuaries, no, because our waters flow and they need to flow and, and, and uh, fish have intricate life cycles. Thank you. Uh, from Patrick Lumumba, nice presentation. Thank you. And again from Elizabeth, great but very sad presentation. We need to act now. 
Philip, Philip Nyaga, very informative and challenging presentation. Thank you. And from Margaret Vaz. Hi, Margaret. Rivers carry water clearly. We, uh, rivers carry water clearly. We drink water. So pollution of water affects human health as well. Exactly. From Dev Hilliard, again, that was a very inspirational talk. Asante, some very encouraging words. From my personal experience, the people that have the ability to make the greatest change for the better, well, they simply do not understand the importance or they do not like being told what they should do. In many, it may cost them something. How can we round, how can we get around this and bring those people on board to make the necessary changes? Well, it's like what we're doing now. It, all we can do is speak about it. I, I, I speak to, um, Just this platform like Nature Kenya is a very important platform uh, to speak about this. And we, we can talk to um, our policy makers, as I said, we can talk to different organizations, but the concept is so new. There are a lot of people, you're right, shun from it. Because number one, I'm sorry to say, but it doesn't bring grants, you know? How does it affect community? How does it do this? It's not a lion. Do people feel it? It's not about feeling it anymore. It's about what we need to do to make a change. Because if we lose that our fish, we're losing those lions because those lions are then drinking the sewage water. So we need to explain the whole life cycle of of our entire ecosystem and put fish within that life so then they take fish and learn to fish i said do we know five fish who knows five fish that's very sad we don't know five fish we have probably 15 if not more endemic fish in this country meaning they're found nowhere else on earth we have a place like, like Chala. We have the Chala Chala. Google the Chala Chala. There's not even a picture. And if there is, it's not a nice picture to appreciate that species. We have a million pictures of giraffes. We don't have a single picture of a giraffe cartridge. You know, we have a million pictures of elephants. We don't have a single picture of an elephant fish. And we have elephant fish in, in Athi, a species of elephant fish in Athi, which is only found in Athi River. Do you know how special that is for us to be blessed with species that are found nowhere else on earth? Yet we have not even taken a single picture of that fish and it's disappeared. Gone. My generation will never see it. My kids will never see it. We have lost our heritage. We need to make fish our heritage. You need to be proud as Kenyans, we have these birds and we have these fish. And if these fish survive, then our babies are drinking clean water. We need to change the whole narrative of conservation. And right now they're having um, a debate and having talks right now on conservation in Rwanda. The main agenda should be because everything they're talking about survives on water. Yet we have a place like Bagati River and everyone's so proud of Nairobi National Park. And those crocodiles are surviving in sewage water. Those hippos are literally in sewage water. We have fish such as Labeo barbus or Tyrinchas, which is a barb, it's a beautiful silver fish. It's a, I think it's one of the first pictures. And that, that fish requires fresh water to survive. It's such a beautiful bioindicator of nature, of fresh water. And we need to catch it as a child and it's not there anymore. It's finished, it's gone permanently. We can't bring it back. And that used to be in Bagati. And could you imagine we have lost it and we're losing the most ancient and hardiest creatures like crocodiles right within our national. 
while we stand in our national park to eat and flaunting our river, the Bagathi River, we, we have to realize that you can't hide it anymore, that the sewage is moving in because now you can smell it. Before you could hide it, and now it's, you can't hide it because now you can smell it. They were, we're standing in Nairobi National Park and we're smelling sewage. And could you imagine all those animals drinking that water? So I think, how do you make change? By talking about this. And, and by talking without holding back and telling your experiences and, and telling it how it is, because it's very easy to hold things back. It's very hard to say the truth. Thank you. Uh, from Margaret Fuzz, sewage water needs to be tackled in the cities as fish are indicators that water is carrying pollution downstream. Uh, from Winnie, this was a great and uh, eye-opening presentation. Let's all stand firm and protect our aquatic biodiversity. Thank you. Uh, from Shailesh Patel, thank you. Philip Nyaga, kindly share the presentation recording with the participants. Uh, actually, the uh, presentation will be available in our YouTube channel. I think our communication coordinator, George Moacharo, John Moacharo, have uh, shared the link down there. And uh, from Shailesh, uh, he's asking, Mufadal, have you been to Lake Magadi and its area for recorded fish fishes? Uh, yes, I've been to Lake Magadi. And uh, we have uh, actually a species, a uh, cichlid species in Lake Magadi, which uh, is a very hardy fish that can survive the salinity of that water. So it's a very unique fish. Um, it doesn't grow big, but yes, they are definitely they are fish in Lake Magadi. And that, and that, that in, it, in itself, for a, a creature to survive those levels of uh, of salinity is just amazing. Yeah, I've been to Lake Magadi and now what I'm looking for is support to go far and wide and, um, and go into places that have never been fished before. And even if places have been fished before, to go to places and actually take pictures of the fish and tell people that. Um, Look at the colors. Look, look, look at the size of this fish. Look, look at how it swims. Look at the dorsal fin. Look at this. Look at this, and and explain to them their life cycle. And there's so many things about fish that we we underestimate and we never looked at. So this is what I want to look at: different aspects of fish, but more so uh, for the people, just the beauty of the fish, and explain to them the individual. And, how, and, how and why they're important to our ecosystem. Thank you. Uh, from Joshua Sese, it's sad that we are and we will be losing species to extinction without uh, knowing them. We need more taxonomists and conservationists to stand to be counted. From Philip Nyaga, how will the ordinary citizen and the government responsible persons get to know uh, to that polluting water affects all of us as told in this presentation. <laughs> Please, you tell us, Philip. Today, you finish this presentation, write to your MCA, write to your, um, uh, there, are so, there are so many posts these days, <laughs> write to your governor, write to your MP, write to the president. It's upon each and every one of us. So if, if you see sewage outside your house and you do not complain to your elected leaders, then it's actually your fault. Because they don't care because probably they don't know. But after watching this, you know. So write. I've been writing, but I'm one man. I want everyone here to write where you are in Embakasi, you're in Langata, you're in Westlands, you're in Parklands, you're in Magadi, write to your local politicians and say, I'm smelling to it outside my house. 
and this sewage is entering a national forest. Relate to the Minister of Tourism, relate to KWS, and say, we need to stop this sewage. So this is how ordinary citizens will tell the government, by writing and making it public. And it's not confrontation, but we were not, we're not here to confront anyone. We're here to tell the truth, and they will look at it very positively, I, I assure you. I've been talking to heads of KWS and um, obviously heads at the museum, and, and everyone's taken this very positively in terms of thank you, we did not know these species exist. And now we know and we'll do something about it. So the more we write, and, and maybe there's other forms of communication, maybe you know them personally, maybe you know leaders personally, talk to them. I'd really appreciate that. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, from uh, Paul Rosita. How good to see your photo of the elephant fish. I'm sorry I was held up, but at least he's joined in. Welcome, Paul. Uh, John Wacharo is uh, inviting all of us uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we are able to view recordings of our previous talks. And uh, yes, Paul, the presentations will be available afterwards. Uh, from Philip Nyaga, in addition to Chala tilapia, there is also tilapia chipe. That is exactly. unique in Kenya, and I agree with you for it to be studied. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, Shayla, she's also asking, do you take any water BH sample? So I, I, I deal with uh, fish species, but yes, we work with, um, we work with scientists who then take pH samples. Um, they, they take DNA samples. Uh, they take samples of um, pieces of animals found within, uh, inside our rivers to, to basically test them as well. We take uh, temperature, we take depth. So yes, we do, but as I said, I don't, my goal is to merge science with art, if you want to call it that, because these fish are natural art. They're, they're so beautiful. And I, and I want to show fish in a different light. So my, my main thing is making common people who are not necessarily interested in fish. To so, so I'm not here to talk about pH levels of water or or you know the the oxygen in the water. We also we also do diluted oxygen. We also take oxygen uh, parameters. But the, but the main goal of this presentation and the main goal of what I want to do is we'll keep the science, but how to tell the science in a way that is understandable to all. And people can then relate to that information. Hey, thank you. Uh, there is an insightful suggestion from Joshua Sese. I suggest that the space in the aquarium at the museum be expanded to capture more endemic species in Kenya and those that are endangered. It will be a great way uh, of publicization. Secondly, to the already established ichthyologists, please spare some time and inspire the young generation. It will be great for them to start acknowledging the study as early as now. And thank you, Mufadal, for the awesome presentation. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. From Patrick Lumumba, again, can hyacinth help filter pollution before re uh, releasing the water into our legs? Please don't introduce invasive uh, species into our water bodies. I think we've seen enough invasive species with a plant or fish or a lot, a lot of what we have in Kenya today is invasive. So no, I, I, would, I wouldn't. Uh, if, if hyacinth is in an area which is naturally found 
and, um, and a study is done which can help uh, filter pollution then well and good, but I don't condone um, putting anything invasive uh, into our water bodies as it is they're suffering um, a lot. And Hyacinth all, also I've seen in areas with the invasive have completely taken over and depleted oxygen levels and have killed fish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Last one from uh, Dev. Sir, you are exactly correct. They need to be told the truth and have the facts trust upon them and put right in front of their faces. They need to know that unless they take serious action now, then their children and grandchildren will be seriously affected. Let us pull together. I have already tried to share this video, but it is not yet available. I will try again later. Okay, Dave, uh, after this uh, presentation, just some few minutes, then uh, we will be able to upload uh, the whole of the presentation in our YouTube channel, then we'll be able to share from there. So uh, we have gone through all the questions, comments, concerns that were raised through our chat box, not unless um, anyone still have a burning question for uh, to our speaker. I think we have about uh, five minutes and then uh, we bring our virtual talk to an end. Anyone maybe? Yes, Shailesh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask. I think you raise up your hand. Oh yeah, I've done that. Thank you very much. Um, very nice presentation. I have to remember um, when you mentioned uh, the cichlid, which you found in Magadi. Yeah. Now, when I was in Kenya many, many years ago, there was a small article which appeared in the newspaper saying that that particular species was very hardy and yes. would stand, you know, high you know, temperatures and even the pH of would survive in that condition. Now it wouldn't grow, it would grow a certain length, not like a full grown tilapia because of the water condition. Um, the first very small article written, I, I can't remember many years ago. Now I used to do this a club called Aquarius Club of Kenya. I don't know if it's still there or not. We used to travel out of Nairobi, you know, looking for other freshwater fish, you know, which, what, what to farm, where. And we had gone beyond Magadi, if you're going to work Guruman Hills, you get a lot of these seasonal rivers, you know, according to the rainfall. And as mentioned many years ago, you know, many, many years ago, all of our freshwater were not polluted. What's now? Because now it's you know, full of, it might be full of mercury, which can be, you know, it can just kill you instantly if you, if you drink or, you know, something like that. So we went to a place called Guruman and we were looking at what fishes were found there. And, you know, water is very brown. It's not clear water because it's coming from uphill and it's filtered through all these um, the surrounding uh, environment. The other place I used to go to, the Hunter's Lodge. That's another good place if you're looking for freshwater fish. And we used to collect fish. So we used to collect a lot of non native which were introduced. Yes, to uh, yes. Yeah. So we yes. knew things, things like guppies, uh, mosquito fish. That they introduced mosquito fish to control mosquitoes. Yes. And that's what fish was called mosquito fish. Yes. And, and things like. Um, green foothill they were all introduced to control mosquitoes but because they used to give life birth so we knew what fish were there now you know it's a fresh water spring so you're getting you know clean water coming in after that i don't know what happened now i'm talking about many years ago i don't know if if people still go to hunt of lodge i do not know or if the lodge is still in operation Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, the lodge is still in operation. Uh, the, the, the small dams are still there. Uh, you, get a, you actually get eels on that side, the African motor eels that have traveled from the ocean. So that's one of the stops. I've got loads of them there. 
Um, yes, but even those watches, which are very pristine at your time, are getting uh, polluted now. And uh, this tilapia that we're talking about in Magad is called uh, Alcolapia grahami, which was also the Lake Magadi tilapia. Um, and yes, that is still in existence. Uh, but it would be nice to go there and document that fish in the nature, right? And, and appreciate it for what it is. Thank you for your uh, for for telling us about uh, the history and uh, how you used to go and collect fish. And this is very important to us because maybe there's fish you collected in those days which are not available anymore. If you have any pictures, please send them through. Hey, thank you very much uh, for that. Actually, maybe for more information about uh, fish conservation, we also uh, welcome our members uh, to join the Samaki Walking Group, which Aliba is a member, and uh, you can further the fish conservation agenda forward. I have uh, shared uh, the email that you can uh, reach us on for more information on how to join our Samaki Walking Group. So uh, anyone else with another question? or concern or comment. Okay, Shailesh uh, says uh, no pictures were taken during his time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, each and everyone for your time. Uh, having there be no any other question, then uh, this brings us to an end of our today's virtual talk. We will be sharing more uh, communication about our upcoming uh, talks, especially for next month through your emails. Thank you very much for your time and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please help me save our fish. Thank you. Thank you, indeed. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Okay. We can now leave at our own pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.